The Alkalite is a new show on Disney Plus aimed at children, but being watched by middle-aged men who still have a chip on their shoulder from a franchise that died a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Let's talk about it. This episode is going to break down episode two of the Crapolite. Previously, I talked about three and one. I'm out of order here because what happened is I did a spoiler review for episode three. People loved it. It did far better than a lot of my videos on the channel. So I'm going to obviously go where the target audience is and give the people what they want. That means going through and breaking down every episode of the Crapolite going forward. So if you like this kind of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Adam does movies, not Adam does TV shows. Occasionally I dip my toe in that pit and here we are. But rest assured, I review all new movie releases that come out, I rant, I roast, I do live streams all around movies. Now let's begin with this turd factory. The second episode opens on planet Olega. And here all I'm thinking is, whose Olega do I have to hump to get a good Star Wars episode around here? It's bad. Let's go on. May boss bitches herself into a restricted area. She enters a room where a Jedi is deep in meditation. After getting down into her stupid Mortal Kombat reptile pose, she demands the Jedi attack her with his full strength. This is a thing she keeps demanding of people and they never do it, which kind of makes her kills all the more embarrassing. It's almost like she succeeds because the people underestimate her so much because she's so unthreatening, kind of comes off as a complete joke. Not the most exciting thing to watch play out. Uh, instead, she's going to fight the air for several seconds, lose to that, and flee the scene. Hiding from the title screen. Back with Mechnek Osha. She wakes to have a chat with her old master soul. It is unclear at this point why she and her sister have elected to keep the same hairstyle they've had since they were children. We're going to move past it, though. There's plenty of other things to complain about. Soul learns from Ugly Gamora that May has attempted another assassination, and he and Osha have to investigate. It really makes a lot of sense to bring Osha along for the ride. She was suspect number one just like 24 hours earlier. She's a burnout Jedi who chose to stray away from the path. So yeah, of course, bring her along, have her do the investigation with him because there might be some sort of attachment between these two sisters after all. They're definitely not working together. They're not in cahoots. She could still potentially be the killer after all, but no, let, yeah, let's make her the second in command here. Instead of, I don't know, maybe not doing that because you have a bunch of other Jedi that you can use and in fact are going along as well. Scary Spice pays a visit to an old acquaintance. It's Ezra Miller, his doppelganger. I shall call him Moss Eisley Miller. Eisley Miller for short. Sounds like Ezra Miller, but it's related to Star Wars. You get it. Let's keep going. In order to kill Jedi Torben, May's going to have to get some sort of a concoction that Isley Miller whips up in no more than five seconds. He's got all the ingredients. It's ready to go. Let's do this. Side note, I just have to say, May is probably the most unthreatening villain I've ever seen ever. She just is so cute in her purple outfit. So Disney-fied. I want to take her out and go trick-or-treating. And then head back to my place that night watch some scary movies while we check out our candy haul. That sounds wonderful. That sounds better than this. Sol and Osha have a dull conversation about being a bad teacher and a bad student. Thankfully, it's short-lived. May returns to Torben, who's still deep in Jedi meditation VR. In fact, it's now the only way he can achieve climax. She sets down the vial of mutagen she acquired, gives him an ultimatum. Hey, either come clean about what you did all those years ago with those other Jedi I'm trying to assassinate, or drink what's in the vial. It'll be over toot sweet. With the foresight that this bitch isn't going to leave him alone, and the fact that he's probably going to have to sit through a many conversation with her, he elects to kill himself. Drink the vial. The most Disney Plus sorry looking Jedi bunch I've ever seen is spying on the apothecary. That's a tough word to say, apothecary. I think that's right. Osha gets to cosplay as her sister and go undercover, which is really easy to do, it turns out, when you look identical and still retain the same hairstyle. It's almost too easy. All she had to do was throw some purple garbs over her and... She's ready to go. Isley Miller, believe it or not, isn't fooled by one of the worst performances ever. This is terrible, Osha. You suck at acting. 
Thankfully, the Jedi are right outside the door. They pop in and grill Isla for answers. <laughs> and he flips on May incredibly fast. They don't have to do anything. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll tell you everything you need to know before they really even ask a question. It's, it's pretty pathetic. They find out she's heading back there that night to get further supplies because every good assassin knows you continuously go back to the scenes of the crime. You keep showing yourself in the town that you just did murder in. It's brilliant. All right, we have a big confrontation between Master Soul and Mei, who's surprised to see him. She's like, what? There's Jedi here patrolling the streets after I just killed a Jedi? What are the odds? And they have an epic showdown where she tries to kill him with her dumbass knives, but he throws those lame things aside and they do a cool little fight. It's decent. It's decent. And at this point in Star Wars, all I'm looking for is decent because everything good is gone. Thanks, Disney. I love what you did to my heroes. Again, zero threat coming from May. She does some spins, a twist, and a kiss. Soul looks bored almost to be there. He's throwing her aside. He's like, are we really doing this right now? This is pathetic. While this is happening, Osha's in a hallway listening in. There's a poor edit here. I gotta point it out. She's on the little intercom thing, whatever that dumb little toy that they're trying to sell is. There's a person in the background walking towards her. Camera does a cut. Cuts back, woman's gone, disappears out of thin air, only to reappear down the hallway, NPC walking through again. What is going on? May is now surrounded. How in the fuck is she going to get out of this one? Well, she knows a Jedi's true weakness is sand. She huffs and she puffs and she blows the Jedi's house down, disappearing into the puffs of sand that appear. It was almost too easy. Seriously, it was almost too easy. Ah, sand! Ugh, ugh. Is she using super speed to get away? No, nah, she's just kind of jogging over there. Yeah, I would get her, but ugh, ah, sand. Ugh, yuck, I hate it. It gets everywhere. Finally, we get our first sister, sister confrontation as Tia and Tamara lock eyes with one another. Hot. Sexy hot. Much like me in Fortnite, Osha cannot hit shit and May gets away. That's a shame. Soul gets scolded by Martian Manhunter because he botched this entire mission. And might I just point out that the Jedi are just idiots. If you know, pretty much without a shadow of a doubt, that this character that's going around killing off your own members is going to be at an exact location that night, why not pull down the full force of the Jedi Knight? Why not pull down 10% of the force, 5%, maybe even two? Instead, they elect to just keep the four schlubs that are there working. Surround the area, make a perimeter, get ships right outside the planet so that she can't leave. This isn't complicated. We have established that there's been peace and a harmony for hundreds of years now. Put up a barricade. Jesus Christ, what in the world? Anyway, May gets away. <laughs> the episode winds down with two space hobos on another planet coming into contact with a Wookiee. Who knows the Force? Why not? Sure, everybody, everybody knows the Force at this point. The Force is furry. His name is Kalnaka, and I believe he knows Osha and May. I'm sure he'll have a pivotal role later in this show. <laughs> Can't wait for this to be over. And that's the episode. And we'll have more to come. Of course, there's a new episode on every Tuesday night. I'll be watching. Of course, you'll be watching. We'll all be watching and celebrating. This is a great show that everybody's excited about. Let me know your thoughts, though, for real. Are you liking the show? Sincerely, I envy you. I was like half in, half dick in, but then the third episode hit and completely lost me, actually disgusted me with how bad it was. And now I'm just salty all over again. It's kind of like Mandalorian. It had me with season one, season two, I was still on board. Oh, Book of Boba Fett was hot trash, but maybe Mando season three. Well, nope, that's shit too. Oh, Kenobi, that could be a shining beacon of hope. Nope, terrible. I absolutely embarrassingly bad. Ahsoka I didn't care about. I know Andor is really highly praised. I've watched three episodes. I was actually impressed. I do need to get back to Andor. I really like Rogue One. Rogue One is, is kind of like the outlier for Star Wars, the Disney stuff. It's one of the few great things that they've done. Everything else 
either uh, serviceable, mediocre crap, or downright awful. And it looks like what we have here is getting to the downright awful phase. Tune in though, please like the video, subscribe for more videos, I encourage you. It's, it's paramount that you hit that subscribe button. It's actually free, I turn Sheila, yep, she's giving me the thumbs up, it's free. Sheila said it's free, thanks Sheila, you can, uh, you can show yourself out, you're fired. But um, yeah, I would love if you stuck around. I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I complain up a storm about really inconsequential things, day-to-day -day stuff that a lot of uh, first world problemers can have, like not getting your straw in a bag when you go to a drive-thru, or people talking loudly on their phones while you're just trying to work out at the gym, lots of things like that. Would love to have you there as well. Oh, and if you're looking for a way to super thank me, you can actually leave a super thanks on the video. Say, hey, Adam, here's five bucks. Keep at it, son. You're doing great. And I would just say in return, may the force be sold to someone that actually cares about it again. Take care.